Hello Royalty, good morning and welcome to our touch point today. My name is God Gift Austin, your regular host and anchor to this channel. Like we used to do it, we pick our topics, we deliberate on them scripturally to find out the mind of God in those areas of concerns raised. And in so doing, those questions that have lingered over the years in our heart and sometimes seem to have defied answers have been tackled. I have the assurance that your own questions have been tackled in this platform. You just have to be part of us, subscribe and follow us where necessary. Then go through the clips, the memory lane, over 200 of them. Before you finish them, you discover how much God has done for your life. Please remember to share your testimony with us. It's part of our testimonies also. God bless you. Let's pray. My Lord and my God, I thank you for today. I thank you for yesterday. I thank you for tomorrow. Thank you for what you are doing and what you will yet do. Glorify Jesus in our midst this morning. Let your word nourish our souls, nourish our spirits, and nourish our bodies all together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we have been talking about affirmation, which we started yesterday. And we started with the question, how does God affirm us? And it was very obvious that he affirmed or affirms us to now. When he began with, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So for God to make you and I in his image and likeness is an affirmation. Other animals were created in their own ways and likenesses. But for us, he chose us to be in his likeness. That is the greatest affirmation. This morning, we continue from that same question with another outline. First Samuel 18 verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height. For I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That is how it is. In, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, obviously, I am not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goals, I would not be a Christ's servant, that is the truth. In Matthew 6, 3 to 4, But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gift in private and your Father who sees everything will reward you. Philippians 1, verse 6, And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it finally was finished on the day when Christ returns. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, And you are living stone that God is building into his spiritual temple. What is more, you are his holy priest, though the, the mediation of Jesus Christ. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that pleases God. In Psalm 149 verse 4, For the Lord delights in his people, he crowns the humble with victory. What do we make out of all this is that God affirms our effort to follow him, even effort that don't earn affirmation from people around us, or effort that don't seem to be making a difference. God delights in a heart that truly strives to follow him far more than he delights in the impressiveness of the result. I want us to stop here and think about this. God has given us avenues, opportunities, and that shows us actually that if he did not affirm us, we were not meant to be here. And we didn't qualify for all these things. And sometimes we look at it and say, God, it doesn't hate you. The truth is that it is your sinfulness that is even taking you to the other side of the world. But he has made opportunity for us. And we want to say, Father, I want to return back to you this morning. 
Just simply say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Lord, please save my soul from eternal hell and damnation. I don't want to die without knowing you. Wash me by your blood this morning. Cleanse me, O oh Lord, and give me a fresh breath and a new beginning. Write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Father, I want to reign with you in eternity. Satan, withdraw your feeding hands out of my life. You did not make me. You cannot keep me. My life belongs to Jesus Christ and I have returned to him right away. Thank you, Father. I am born again. And Jesus now will pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me this morning, congratulations. And I want to encourage you to keep looking at this perfect law of liberty. The Lord has built them up for you to make you who you will be and a perfect you tomorrow. So keep feasting. And to my listeners all over the world, I pray for you. The blessings of the Lord will identify with you this season. The hand of God is upon you to differentiate you from the crowd. You will stand out and become a standard for others to follow in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. You will never beg to feed. You will never beg to survive this year. But the Lord will sustain and uphold you continuously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.